Simon Yates with ice in his veins puts incredible pressure on Jumbo Visma and Primoz Roglic today in the final stage of Paranese. Roglic going into this stage eight, wearing the leader's jersey for the second year in a row, 47 seconds ahead of Yates, a minute ahead of Martinez. A comfy lead, right? Incorrect. Paranese is never over until it is over in Nice. You remember last year, Roglic crashed twice on the final stage and lost GC to Shackman. Ineos with Yates and Martinez and Simon Yates on bike exchange in good form. And he's lost, I think, Paranese GC on the final stage himself previously. They're not going to go down without a fight. It's a nasty must-watch stage every year. 115 k's long. They go up the cold airs as the final climb. It's medium mountains all day, harder than last year, and then a descent into the finish in Nice. Matters worse for Roglic, it was raining today as well. It made the roads even more treacherous. It was cool conditions. And Yumbo didn't let a break go today. They had Wavlin up there. The question was, would he work as a domestique? Would he pace? Would he go for the stage win? That answer was clear early when he was pacing on the front when he dropped in previous stages earlier. But yeah, Yumbo whittled this group down to about 25 riders pretty early in the cold conditions. And without letting a break go, I was wondering, were they trying to also get a stage win for Wout Van Aert? He'd be the favourite for the finish if he made it. And when they got on the, to the Côte de Pay with 6.6k, 7%, the second last climb, Ineos, who have about one domestique here, Freyler, went to the front, started pacing hard. And again, I was seeing Dennis here, I was like, just let him go. There's no need to chase Frailer. the Ineos guys are behind you. Dennis was then done after that with 5Ks left in the climb, 50Ks left. Yates and Martinez move up, and we know it's a matter of time before attacks start to fly. And Martinez on the left side, as we look at it with the motorbike coming up the right, attacks with 3Ks left in the climb, Quintana's the man who responds but shifts a gear badly, and it's Wout van Aert. The question's answered. He self-dropped the other day, preserving his legs. Closed Martinez easily with Roglic on his wheel and Simon Yates gapped, and then started pacing. For the rest of this climb, he shut this down. Adam Yates dropped, Haig dropped, McNulty, Almeida and co. all dropped. Today, incredible performance from Wout van Aert for Primoz Roglic the leader on GC with Simon Yates, always dangerous, but very difficult to tell what he's going to do. And Wout was trying to get the group to work. Nara's like, I literally have no incentive to work. Wout, you can go back on the front. So Wout paced the descent before the final climb of the day. Yates, though, took three bonus seconds ahead of Martinez to Wout took one ahead of Roglic. All seemed immaterial at that point. Martinez has a mechanical. He'd already been looking bad on the descent. Rear wheel flat. Terrible luck for him. He had fantastic legs once again. That was his stage and ambitions for moving up on GC. Done. He'd never make it back. And Roglic was getting undressed. And I was white knuckling the whole time watching this. Wout puts his right arm up. They have to go to the other side of the road through a gap in the traffic islands. And Roglic either doesn't see it or just, I don't know, makes a mistake. Luckily for him, it opened up again. He goes through there, but wet, slick roads, a lot of paint in and out of Nice town where there's road furniture. It's a tricky stage. They get to the cold air, 6K, 7.6%. There's a steep section of 14% in the middle. And I do think Quintana kind of played himself here. He could have gone for third on GC. I'm not sure he had the best legs and he attacks multiple times trying to get rid of Van Aert, maybe for the stage win, which I guess is honorable rather than going for third on GC but he'll drop later, whereas it's Simon Yates sitting on testing Van Aert and Roglic, seeing their condition, and he hits them just before they turn left up to a steep, narrow road with a savage attack. Roglic can't respond. You see the cadence difference between Roglic and Simon Yates in the baby blue kit for bike exchange up this 14% section. Van Aert can't help Roglic here, and we knew if Roglic isn't closing this, with his trademark thermonuclear bridge, then he can't be feeling good, or at least not feeling in top shape. Martinez was the strongest of the group behind, but Simon Yates, there was a strong headwind on this climb. Full nuclear performance from Simon Yates. He can whip them out occasionally, and he gains 22 seconds in 10 seconds, defying the laws of physics once again. One of the only guys apart from Roglic and Pagacha to do that, and Wout Van Aert was dropping Roglic when he was going on the front to pace for Roglic, while Simon Yates said Roglic wasn't breathing yesterday on Torini, 
Well, he put pressure on him so much today, and we thought, is this Planche de Belfi again? Is this Paris Nice Stage 8 last year all over again? Luckily, though, Rolich hadn't crashed this time. They eventually drop Quintana as the climb opens up a little bit. Draft is more important, not as steep here, but Rolich looked like he was struggling. The gap was at 24 seconds, and I think without Wout van Aert pacing there, who, by the way, put two to four seconds back into Yates in the last two, three kilometers of this climb, which is just outrageous. Yates took a lot of his time in that initial burst, as he typically does on the steepest section past all the houses. Without Wout, without maybe Martinez having that mechanical who could have helped Yates on the climb, this could have been disaster for Roglic. Again, it's 21 seconds over the top. Descent and false flat downhill run in to Nice worked in the favor of Roglic sitting behind the big Belgian champion. I do think on the technical sections, Simon Yates was a little bit quicker. They ended up only putting 12 seconds back into Yates. Perhaps that was because Roglic was taking it easy. You see Wout here looking over his shoulder, wondering where Primoz is. Rolich had been losing the wheel a little bit. He eventually would actually help Wout into the finish. Maybe he felt better afterwards. Perhaps also there was motos on the last five kilometers in front of Yates, which might have helped him as well. He didn't lose any more time in the last three Ks. So this was an incredibly close run thing. He needed 40 seconds. He didn't end up getting them, largely because of Van Aert's work, but he takes a huge stage win for Bike Exchange and second on GC. A lot of points, and he'll be a top three favorite for the Giro d'Italia, you can bet that. Wout van Aert brings Roglic across the line, a big scare once again, but unlike last year, they remained victorious, only losing nine seconds on the stage in the end. Van Aert probably could have taken the stage win if it played out a bit differently, McNulty leading the rest of the group back in. So no changes in the top six of GC. Roglic takes that Paranese win after the disappointment of last year. 29 seconds ahead of Yates. Martinez keeps third. Unlucky today. 237 back. Adam Yates on 329. Then Quintana Haig, Izaguirre, Almeida, Guillaume Martin and Paddy Pantra 10th. I hope you enjoyed the Paranese videos. A bit of a rest next week. Let me know in the comments what you thought when Roglic got dropped by Yates. Did you think, here we go again, He's going to lose GC. Until next week, ciao.